Have you wanted to get started in remote sensing by playing with some real world data, but don't know where to start? In my opinion, browsing and then accessing and playing with Landsat data is probably the best way to get started understanding how to work with satellite data. Even though it's not the highest resolution and it doesn't really measure up to what we see with Google Maps now, the extensive back catalog of images makes it really unbeatable for studying geographic change and just understanding how we can work with images like this. Um, we can take principles from working with this, this easier to work with data and apply that to higher resolution data later. So in this video, I wanna cover some of the basics of accessing, downloading, and visualizing Landsat imagery in ArcGIS Pro. To keep the video short, I'm gonna split uh, what would be one video into three parts that are shown right here. And this first video is gonna focus on carrying out a search for the image that you want or need in the USGS Earth Explorer Geo Portal. And then we're gonna move on to how you download that imagery and get it ready for loading into ArcGIS or some other GIS software via um, how you manage those files, basically. And then finally, we're gonna open it and visualize a composite image in ArcGIS to get something like what we see at right with this false color image of the, the central coast of California. So the first step is getting to the USGS Earth Explorer Geo Portal. So the website you need to navigate to is called Earth Explorer, and you can reach it at earthexplorer.usgs.gov, or of course you can enter it in a search engine like this. We have Earth Explorer here, and I will press enter to search. It should be the first thing that shows up. So I'm gonna click on Earth Explorer <clears throat> to navigate to it. So this is what it looks like. Um, we have kind of a lot of parameters here, so I'll talk about which, which, what do we enter here to get what you want. It's also important to note that you will have to register for an account from USGS. So I'm gonna click Login, and it's been a while since I've logged in, so let's go to Create New Account. This is what you'll enter here. You'll need a username and a password to be able to download data at some point. So I'm gonna go back and log in now, but um, you should be able to navigate the uh, account creation process and log in on your own. Once you finish signing up for the service, you'll have to confirm your email address. So you'll get a uh, check email to your email, click confirm, and then you'll be able to sign in here with the username and password you created. So here we go, then it takes us back to the search page. So let's look at what the options are here. So we see a map here in the center of the view, a map window, and on the left we have the search criteria that let us decide where we wanna look at and what characteristics or parameters we want to put on that search or that query. So we have a few options uh, looking for specific addresses. We can search for that specifically or features or if we know the path and row which is specific to the um, movements of the satellite we can put that into. But let's start with a feature. I'm going to put in Palomar College, College IT Chat in San Marcos, California. So you can type in the feature name here, uh, Palomar College. You can Pick more parameters, state, feature type, whatever, but it should show up just by clicking show. So we'll do that. And then to move to that area and zoom in on it, I'll click on Palomar College and it actually inputs that location here in the search. So when we do the search, it'll actually search for whatever is drawn or indicated in the map. And in this case, we just have a point indicated for Palomar College in San Marcos, California. You can also draw a circle or draw a polygon. Um, whoops, let's do this another way because um, I lost it by searching around there. I can go back and search for Palomar and click that again, but let's do another way. So if I click use map, it'll search for the entire area that I'm looking at at that point in time. So as with many things in GIS, there's multiple ways to do this. So let's switch to doing it this way, um, illustrating two different ways to do it. Now we're gonna search for all images that include this polygon or part of this polygon. So that's by clicking use map. We can look for different date range. So if you just want spring photos or summer photos or winter photos, um, or if you want something from 10 years ago to compare to now, you can enter that here. I'm gonna leave it empty. So by default, it'll just tell me the most recent images kind of working backwards from there. Cloud cover is a really important parameter. So right now we're saying we're including zero to 100% cloud cover. You probably don't want that many clouds in your satellite image if you're doing any sort of analysis. So I'm gonna decrease this to 10 and it'll basically just throw out all the images. It's pretty clear here a lot of the time, but sometimes we get like a dense fog or marine layer along the coast. Um, it'll exclude those values so that we can actually see the ground. Okay, so we have those main parameters set. Let's click on um, data sets. So here's where you get to say, 
I don't want just any data you have for this area. I want Landsat data. I want process Landsat data that's easiest to work with. Um, it's worth exploring some of these other options if you want other types of data at another point in time. But for Landsat, we can just expand the Landsat drop down right here. And um, let's do Landsat collection to level two. So there's different levels of processing. This level three is actually new to me, so I will check that out another time. But typically, uh, level two is a highly processed version of these images that are, are good to work with. And I'll just click Landsat 8 just to narrow things down. Um, the bands differ between different versions of the satellite, so it's important to know which one you're working with. Um, and we're going to just look at Landsat 8 right here. We can click Additional Criteria. This gives us other options, um, so we can like how we uh, filtered for cloud cover, you can filter for other things as well. I'm not going to filter for anything else here, but it's worth knowing that these different um, filters do exist when the product was generated, image quality, uh, what the where the satellite's looking, whether it, which path and row it's on, because if you have a large area like this, it might include multiple different uh, swaths of the satellite, and you might only want one, things like that. Okay, let's click results. And here's where we get the interesting, uh, interesting part where we get to look at the actual satellites of recent um, that have recently been taken of this area. So we have an ID for each. These in, kind of encode a lot of information in the titles, and I'll talk about that in the next video. But the things you might initially look at are the date acquired, um, and then you can look at a preview of it in the the map window by clicking this little uh, JPEG or photo file. And here you can kind of see that. You know, this, this image isn't perfect. It was taken on one specific date, and there's a date when there were some clouds. So this was on September 9th, and it looks like there were some clouds in the mountainous areas behind San Diego. Uh, maybe we don't want that. Let's look one further back. So taken about two weeks before. We have this one from August uh, August of 24, August, uh, sorry, August 24th of 24. Um, and it looks like, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, a few clouds off the coast, but for the most part, the land areas look pretty good. So you might choose to work with this one. Um, one more thing you might want to click. So we have the JPEG um, icon looking overlay, but we also have the footprint. So this is a little, um, a little less to load, but if you turn off the preview and turn on the footprint, you see the extent of this image in the uh, map window over here. So you can see everything that's included on the base map. But it, of course, it's not showing the actual data. Um, just for fun, let's look at one more. So this is from April. Looks like maybe there were some clouds over summer because we jumped from April to August. I'm going to turn off the footprint of the previous one and once again look. Oh, something interesting that we see that's different in April is that it looks like there's some snow on uh, Mount San Jacinto over here, which is interesting and a little bit different. It's something you might want to study. Okay, so let's turn off the preview and say we're going with this one. If you look at these icons over here on the left, there's a couple more options, but then there's the disk, uh, hard disk, kind of an, an old, old fashioned hard drive with a green arrow going into it. If we click on that, that gives us the download options. So in this download dialog, you'll have different options that you can choose. Um, I'm going to look at even more options by clicking here. And by getting to this screen, the uh, product download options, if you click that expand button on the previous screen, you'll see every single file that's a part of this, uh, this data set of the scene. So there's actually quite a few derived products and the main core bands for this image. I'm going to download the product bundle. So this is a big file. It's 800 megabytes. Um, so make sure that you have space and it, don't try to download too many of these at once or you might run into trouble with um, space. So I'm going to click it. All right, and we get that classic uh, download dialog from Windows. I have a place I usually put these. I like to keep it simple, so I keep them in local disk C, data. Um, I have a few different projects in here, so I save things like this in sample, Landsat demo. Um, I will just plop it right in here. So we have this compressed archive folder and that long, sort of ungainly, but very informative name for the Landsat file. Um, it's going to be called that, but it's going to be compressed. We're going to have to uncompress it and uh, open it open it up to put all those other files into this folder in the next bit. So if I click Save. So upon downloading it, I got a weird error um, that has to do with my internet service provider 
So I did see that if you check the downloads in Firefox or Chrome or Safari, all these should have a similar download progress button. If I click it, it does show that it downloaded the .tar file to where I specified. So in the next video, I'll demonstrate the unzipping and um, locating of that in ArcGIS Pro to get it in there.